The yellow light of the sun just after high noon rested lazily upon the island of Congo Bongo. From the tallest snow-capped mountains to the rippling waters of the Crescent Bay to the towering jungle trees, every inch of the island was free to happily enjoy resting under the warm caress of the solar rays. Some may call this tropical paradise the most beautiful in the world, bringing a sense of serene calm unlike any other. However, this peaceful day would very soon be unsettled by quarrel and discontent. But Cranky, I just don't get it. Of course you don't get it. If you did get it, then we wouldn't be having this argument. But I'm the future ruler of Congo Bongo. Shouldn't that mean- It doesn't mean squat, nada, silch, buckkiss. You'll only be in charge once the time is right. Face it, Donkey Kong, you aren't ready for the responsibility yet. <sighs> Someday, when you're older and wiser, you'll look back on yourself and realize the difference between a Kitty Kong and a King Kong. All you ever do is look down on me. But whenever something goes wrong, who is it you always call to save the day? Me! That's who! Being a ruler is a lot more than just hitting bad guys. You just don't seem to understand that. Give me a break, Cranky. I already know everything there is to know about what it takes to be the leader. Tell that to Inka Dinka Doo. He doesn't seem to think you're ready either. I thought you still remember what he said to you. To know everything, one must give up everything. Yeah? That advice was bogus from the start and you know it! I rest my case. <sighs> Maybe Inka Dinka do with the crystal coconut will think otherwise once you grow up. I don't have to... I don't have to take this from you, old timer! I don't need you! I don't need Inka Dinka do! I don't need that stupid crystal coconut either! When will that banana brain learn? In the quiet slumber that night, a figure stood masked in darkness. The light of the moon peeking into Cranky's house was just enough to reveal a shadowy arm as it reached for the crystal coconut, poised to pilfer the prize. Loud enough to pierce the air across the entire island was the violent shatter of crystal shards against the ground. This is... Donkey Kong meets Phoenix Wright, Legend of the Crystal Turnabout. Airplane over the South Pacific. Hey everyone, Phoenix Wright here. You may know me as a defense attorney. I'm always standing strong to protect those in need from false accusations. However, for once, I'm going to be spending some time on vacation. Finally, a break from work. I love what I do, but everyone needs some R&R, &R, right? And I can't think of a better way to spend a weekend than an island getaway. Phoenix looks quite different outside of his usual clothing. But it's not like he would wear a full suit and tie to the beach, right? He seems rather comfortable in basic cargo shorts, and, of course, a Hawaiian-style shirt. Aloha. Of course, Maya Faye is along for the ride as well. She's not just my assistant in my career, she's a dear friend. Maya is actually the one who picked out our own little slice of paradise, a place called Congo Bongo Island. I had never even heard of the place before. Turns out the locals have only just recently opened their island up to a fledgling tourism industry. Maya too has made a few alterations to her wardrobe, with matching cargo shorts and a Hawaiian shirt of her own, which is purple to Nick's blue. Whether in business or leisure, these two always seem to stick with their signature colors. Hey Nick, I think I see the island on the horizon. Wow. The island looks bigger than I would have imagined. The closer it gets, the more the shape of the island looks like a banana. Isn't that something? Sure enough, Congo Bongo Island definitely has a crescent shape to it. The island itself is mostly green from the tree line, but there's a prominent snow-covered mountain near the center. The inner part of the crescent looks to have a small bay area, presumably the landing point for the mid-sized seaplane they are flying in on. That building near the bay looks pretty fancy, even from here. It looks like a hotel, so I think that's the building we'll be staying in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. I'm sure you can already see our destination by this point. The local time is 7.45 a.m., and the weather is comfortably sunny without a cloud in the sky. It's looking to be a beautiful day on this island. We're beginning our descent now, and are going to make a water landing. Buckle up, and in a few minutes, we'll be docked at Congo Bongo Island. We buckle up as instructed. Right now, I feel free to actually get excited. Usually Maya is the peppy one, and I'm the one who struggles to keep up, but we're both equally giddy as we await the beginning of our vacation. 
The plane gracefully maintains steady flight while slowly inching nearer to the water below, and a bit of turbulence lets the passengers know that they've touched down. Congo Bongo Island Beach Area Maya and Phoenix take their first steps off the plane onto a wooden pier extending from the nearby beach. It's as if nature itself is greeting them and is quite literally a breath of fresh air from city life. I love it here already! And that must be our hotel over there in the distance! It looks fancy! I could get used to this. Though, I wonder where our tour guide is. I was under the impression there would be someone here to greet us. From the jungle nearby, a small creature jumps out and begins running across the beach on all fours, catching their attention. It looks to be a little monkey, with a blonde ponytail on her head as well as a pink hat. <laughs> and how cute! The monkey's been dressed up in a matching pink suit as if she were dressed for business. She certainly looks friendly, too. She's coming our way, in fact. I know Maya's usually really good with animals. I wonder if this one will let Maya pet her. <sighs> I close my eyes for a moment to stretch. Sorry for being late. You arrived a bit earlier than expected. Opening my eyes back up, I turn to... Wait a moment. There's no one else here. I could have sworn I heard the tour guide, though. I turn to look to the left, then to the right. No one else in sight. Either way, allow me to be the first to welcome you to Congo Bongo Island! Where the heck is that voice coming from? I look at Maya, who is crouched down, putting her about the height of the monkey standing next to her. The monkey is sizing her up, shifting to look at her from various angles as if trying to analyze her. I look at Maya with a raised eyebrow. Maya, who is now wide-eyed, stares directly at me. Without her gaze shifting at all, she raises her finger to point at the monkey. Oh, you must be Miss Fay. My name is Dixie Kong. It's nice to meet you. The monkey, I mean Dixie Kong, shakes hands with Maya, who seems pretty speechless. Dixie then scampers on over to me and raises her hand in my direction. Is this ventriloquism or something? I swear I saw this monkey talking. Her mouth definitely was moving, and the movements were matching the words. Maybe it's an animatronic? I cautiously and awkwardly return the gesture and we shake hands. And you must be Mr. Wright! We spoke through email a few times! You're... a lot taller than I expected! I can tell from the feel of her hand, she's definitely an honest-to-goodness real monkey. We stare at one another for a few solid seconds. Sorry. sorry. I uh, wasn't intending to be rude. Sorry for staring. I'm sorry as well. <laughs> it's just not often I see someone shave almost all their fur off. Not that I'm judging your fashion choices, of course. Well, um, uh, hmm. I suppose I'd better just get the record straight up front, huh? Miss Kong. You're a monkey, correct? What do you mean? Of course I am. With the way you asked that, though, it made it sound like you're not one. <laughs> but that'd be crazy, right? Uh, anyway, please, feel free to just call me Dixie. Let's throw formality out the window. You're here to have fun and relax on the greatest island known to ape kind! Well, yet again, life has thrown our two friends into an utterly bizarre situation. Perhaps a speaking simian is par for the course for Phoenix and Maya. Miss Dixie, I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. Mr. Wright and I aren't monkeys, we're humans. Is that a type of ape? I suppose there is the distinction between monkeys and apes. Oh, I hope I didn't offend you. Uh, not quite. Have you never seen humans before? You two are the first tourists to step foot on our island. I'm so happy that we finally have visitors. I worked very hard to get this whole thing set up. I gather that this island has been essentially isolated from the rest of the world. 
Well, you should probably know before your tourism industry really takes off, if you're having visitors from all over, you're going to be seeing a lot of humans. That's kind of exciting! I knew that there must be all types of folks around the world that we've never met before! The others will be so excited to meet you! Oh, I don't know if any of them have ever seen humans before. I can already tell this trip is going to be unforgettable. Well, the hotel is very close to here. What do you say we drop off your bags in your rooms before we start the tour? Sounds good. I'll go get them from the back. Don't worry, Miss Maya. I've got that taken care of for you. That was nice of him to carry our things for us. I can see the hotel from here, so now all that's left to... Wait. Why is Larry here? How did he get here? Up to this point, they've been so distracted by their new chattering chimp companion that they did not even realize their old pal, Larry Butts, is standing right behind them. No matter where or when this guy shows up, he always acts like there's nothing strange about him being here. Hey, Nick, and Miss Maya. Pretty surprised to see me, huh? Larry's wearing what looks like aviation clothes and a pilot's hat. Don't tell me. That was you flying our plane? You got me. My girl Anita is a flight stewardess, so when we started dating, I picked up a pilot's license and everything. I genuinely thought a talking monkey would be the most startling thing I'd experienced today, but leave it to Larry to one-up even that. Talk about a flighty career change. <laughs> Not for Larry, it isn't. Aren't you guys excited to have your old pal along for the ride? This trip is gonna be awesome! <laughs> Relax, I'm just messing with you guys. I would never intrude on someone else's vacation plans. I'll help you get your bags to the hotel room, but after that, I have my own plans. We appreciate the hand, Larry. The group of companions follow behind Dixie, taking a warm and pleasant trek across the gently rolling sands. Congo Bongo Bay Hotel Room. The hotel looks just as natural as the island around it, being a thatched roof building made out of materials taken right from the jungle. Phoenix and Maya are led through the entrance, and the interior has a soft scent of coconut. Maya leaps toward her bed in a T-pose and sinks into the soft mattress. Nick, I love it here! Let's never leave! <laughs> I can't help but laugh. It's so nice for us to be able to enjoy life like this. We should probably get back on track before we get too comfy in here, though. Well, nice seeing you guys again, but it's time I get going, too. We'll see each other again in a few days when we're ready to fly back. Miss Dixie, thank you for the hospitality. See you around, Larry. All right, folks. Once you've set down your bags, let's get a move on so we can meet the other residents of the island. They're all very excited to have guests. Where will we be meeting everyone? We're going to go to the village up in the canopy. It's only a short walk and a climb from here. A village in the trees, eh? I'm not sure I'd be up to tree climbing. I sure hope we can take the stairs. Dixie guides us to a contraption she calls a barrel elevator. Apparently, they are the primary form of transportation to and from the ground here. Treetop Town. It was a bumpy ride, to say the least. More like a catapult than an elevator. Uh, but here we are, standing on top of a network of wooden walkways high above the forest floor. Hey! Everyone! Our guests have arrived! One by one, a number of primates all begin leaving their various homes, congregating around the visitors with big smiles on their faces. There's a little monkey about Dixie's size wearing a red ball cap and a red shirt, and a large ape next to him wearing a tie. One looks elderly, with a beard, vest, and walking stick. There's a tall girl among them who dresses like an 80s workout instructor. There's one ape with cufflinks, a mustache, and a little bit of hair on his head that he's combed over. And finally, one of the other apes has a bandana and sunglasses on. Wow! They look, uh, different than I expected. They are hoovins, did! The boy's name is Phoenix, and the girl's is Maya! The monkey in red reaches out to shake their hands. I have no idea what that means, but cool! Nice to meet you! I'm Diddy Kong! The one with the exercise headband steps up next. I'm Candy Kong. I hope you'll enjoy your stay on Congo Bongo Island. Candy barely has a chance to finish her introduction before the one with the comb-over introduces himself. Greetings! I am known as Bluster Kong. 
The pleasure is all yours. Now the older one speaks up, nearly cutting off Bluster. Ah, don't mind him. He's up his own Amazon. You can ignore him. Me, on the other hand, I'm Cranky Con. Swell to finally have visitors. I haven't seen any humans here in a long time. The gorilla sporting shades approaches after that. And happy island welcome to you, Alice dudes. My name is Funky Kong. Have a good time and let the positive vibes reach your souls. The remaining gorilla approaches, who is wearing a red tie with the letters DK on it. And I'm Donkey Kong. After announcing his name, the last one in the tie shakes her hands. Holding a banana in his hand, he squeezes it, popping the fruit right out of the peel. It flies fairly high before coming back down for him to catch it in his mouth. That was actually pretty cool. I wonder how long it took him to learn a trick like that. I'm the future ruler of Congo Bongo. So, on behalf of everyone here, I'd like to give you the warmest welcome we can give. Everyone excitedly scuttles around as if they're trying to find their places before a performance. All right, everyone, like we practiced. Wait a minute. What's going on? Uh, Maya? Are you hearing this too? Shh! I think they're about to have a musical number, Nick! Hey everyone, look, we got some visitors now. And I'm sure that they're here to see our island town. Our first two is ever, and I know that they'll feel right at home on a royal. Traffic will treasure trove. Many things to do here. And bananas and coconuts. Plenty to go around. So find us, seat, kick up your feet. Please enjoy your stay. Your vacation has just begun. So, so take a swing from the jungle trees. Look for the peace and you will see a paradise on the ocean blue. Congo Bongo welcomes you. Uh, seriously? Where are these instruments coming from? Who cares? Just have fun! This jam is funky! <laughs> That's my name. Don't wear it out. Wait, what? Surf's up, my dudes. Want to ride some waves? Hop in a fine car and explore some caves. There's so much more, so why don't you stay for a while on a royal? Our new hotel is worth five stars. Your rooms have such a nice view. We've got a bar for you to drink. Hey, I'll take a Mai Tai. So come and play down by the bay. Life here is so swell, as I'm sure you already see. So won't you feel the, the seaside breeze? Or oh, get a suntan if you please. You'll love to hear the marches through. Bongo, bongo, welcome to you. Come on, Cranky, take it to the fridge. Take it to the fridge? What does that mean? Watch him learn, youngins. Can't play a saxophone. So take, take a, a swing from, from the jungle, jungle trees. Look for the, the peace and you will see a paradise on the ocean blue. Congo, Congo, welcomes you. So won't you feel the seaside breeze? Or get a suntan if you please. You'll have a year that much is true. Bongo, bongo, welcomes you! Can I get that Mai Tai now? Yeah, I'll get it. That almost alarmingly spontaneous break into song and dance sure left an impression on Phoenix and Maya, who are, much like myself, still trying to process what just happened. You know, I think I just need to go with the flow on this trip. That was awesome! I have to agree. That was rather impressive. Hang on just one moment. Hold that pose. Nick, you get over here too. Maya practically drags Phoenix over towards them and positions him so that he's kneeling down in the front, and so that every other Kong is in a picturesque position. She has been carrying a tripod on her back for her camera for just such an occasion, and she sets it up facing the group and programs it to take a photo on its own in a few seconds. 
She sprints on over to get in the picture herself, kneels next to Phoenix in the front, and the camera quickly snaps a few photos. Bam! This one will be a keeper, I'm sure! Everyone gathers around to look at the screen on her camera and take a gander at the photographs. And sure enough, they look fantastic! Wicked cool on the camera work to debt. It's only proper that our first real picture of the vacation is a big group photo with all the locals. Thanks, everyone! I hope you can give us copies of the photos when they print. Taking a picture with our first ever tourist is quite a monumental moment for us, too! Before anyone prints anything, I simply must insist you allow me time to do some touching up in my chimp image editing program. I must look my best, you know. This is already a lot of fun. All right, everyone. The island tour will be beginning very soon. Everyone who will be joining us, be sure to get ready to tag along. Oh, me, me. I'm definitely going on the tour. It sounds super exciting. Well, as future ruler, it should be my duty to spread the Mondo Awesome culture Congo Bongo is known for. Dixie, Diddy, and I will all show you the best spots on the island. Since we're already right in the village, why not show them Cranky's cabin first? I bet they'll want to see the crystal coconut. A coconut made out of crystal? I've never heard of such a thing. I'd love to check it out. You know, that's not a bad idea for a place to start. My hut's right over this way. Just be careful not to touch anything or make any messes. Got it? Well, everyone, go ahead and get prepared with your cameras and water bottles. I hope you're all ready to have a barrel full of fun! Cranky's Cabin The outside of this particular hut looks to be the biggest of any of the buildings in this town. Phoenix takes note of several details on its design. Most noticeably, there's a gigantic statue of a monkey surrounding the front door, stretching rather high. There are also several features surrounding the circular area around the home which look like wooden statues. Interesting how they would garnish the exterior of the house like this. I'm already intrigued by Congo Bongo's art and design. I brought a camera of my own, so in addition to Maya, I plan on taking snapshots of all of the areas and locations we visit, starting here with Cranky's home. The inside is very spacious. It has all of the furnishings of a standard home, such as a refrigerator and a dining area, but that's where the similarities to a normal home end. For starters, there's a huge pipe organ. Now, that's interesting. There's also a bunch of beakers and glass vials that look like the ones you would find in a science lab. There's a globe as well, in addition to all kinds of odds, ends, and knickknacks. There's even a gold statue of an ape holding a banana? <laughs> this place is so interesting that I'm already snapping photographs of it. However, even more than the other oddities in view, I find my eyes drawn towards the center of the room, where there's a pedestal with some kind of container on top of it. By all accounts, my home is pretty standard. Nothing too special. Except this one little doohickey right in the center over here. Come on, I'll show you. Phoenix and Maya follow Cranky to the pedestal, and he taps his cane on the floor. The seed-shaped object splits as it cut into triangular pieces and reveals a hollow center, where there's a very large crystal ball. Maya and Phoenix both look on in awe. It's so sparkly! This right here is the crystal coconut. It's a very important relic to Congo Bongo Island. It used to be stuck in the eye of a stone statue named Inka Dinka Doo. We'll be seeing his temple as one of the destinations during our tour, by the way. The crystal coconut has magical powers, and even we don't fully know what it can possibly do. And DK is the one who found it when it fell out of Inka Dinka Doo. And by claiming the crystal coconut, Inka Dinka Doo decided that I would be the future ruler of Congo Bongo. DK holds a banana in his hand and aims it like a weapon, squeezing it to launch the fruit from the field. The resulting projectile hits the wall at an angle that causes it to ricochet to the ceiling, then to another wall, and then back at DK to land in his mouth. That was actually rather impressive. I'm marveling at the technical skill it would require to perform such a feat myself. That's all well and good, but will you give it a rest with the future ruler spiel already? We've all heard it a hundred times. Oh, come on, Cranky. Why do you always have to give me a hard time about this? One of these days, you'll have to accept that I'm going to be the big kahuna. That day will come when it comes. But until then, you're just like everyone else. 
It would do you some good to learn how to be a little more humble. As Cranky turns to walk away, DK makes a rather rude face behind his back. Don't pay any attention to him. I'll need to go have a, a real firm conversation with him later or something. Yikes. Sounds like there's some political drama going on behind the scenes. Best to not get involved. Uh, let's just change the subject. So, uh, Dixie, where's our next stop on the tour? Mm, good question. There's plenty of things on the island, so it may be a bit difficult to pack them all into one day. There's no rush, right? We can go to different places each day and spread the tour across the weekend. That's a great idea, actually! Hmm... Let's see how we can divide things up, then... Dixie takes a long look at the map, squinting her eyes a bit. Well, Inka Dinka Doo's temple is in the opposite direction of everything else. But it's a little far. How about we spend the morning with a relaxing walk through the jungle, see an ancient temple, and then make our way back? We can have lunch at the village with everyone, and you can spend the rest of the day having fun on the beach. Then, tomorrow morning, we'll get an early start and have the rest of the tour. That sounds excellent to me. I was hoping we'd have some time to enjoy the beach. All right, let's get a move on. Congo Jungle our adventure begins here. There are all kinds of flowers, trees, and vines in every direction. Green jungle as far as the eye can see. It's a good thing Dixie is guiding, because I could easily see myself getting lost in a place like this. Keep your eyes out for the local wildlife, too! We've got plenty of unique animals on Congo Bongo! And I'll point them out as I see them! Well, that certainly sounds like a lot of fun! I'll try to get pictures of each species we encounter. Their jungle path is long and winding, with the group constantly curving to not walk into trees in the path, and to not disturb the native animals. They find all kinds of things. Rhinos, ostriches, frogs, birds, and what feels like much more. I can hardly keep my eyes on Dixie guiding us with so many new things vying for my attention. This jungle is way more diverse than I would have ever imagined. Though, to be honest, I'm half expecting some of these other animal species to start a conversation with us or something. Still getting used to the talking apes. Who knows what other kind of animals on this island can speak to? I feel like when we get back home, this is all going to feel like a fever dream. Wait! Don't say anything. And don't move. Maya and I both do as instructed. DK's call was so abrupt that my heart rate is already going up without even knowing what's going on. I quickly realize there must be a dangerous animal nearby. I'm trying my hardest to stay as still as a statue. They see what looks like some kind of blue lizard with a large snout. It's not very tall. Its head is just barely peeking out from above the thick leaves of jungle plants. Yeah, what's a guy gonna do to find a decent snack around here? Yeah. <sighs> Coast is clear. Sorry about that. That was a claptrap. They're mean little critters with sharp teeth who will chomp just about anything. And they're really hard to shake, too. The little monsters will chase you around half the island before giving up. I guess that answers Phoenix's question as to whether or not animals other than apes can talk on this island. That claptrap, just from voice alone, sounded like a rude dude with an attitude. Glad they steer clear of it. How much farther until we get to this temple, anyway? It's actually right up ahead. Temple of Inca Dinka Doo, exterior. Dixie brushes some leaves out of the way to reveal a large clearing of open space in the otherwise dense jungle. Within the large space, there is a rather impressively sized stone pyramid. It appears a lot more well kept than what I'd have expected ancient ruins to look, actually. It's not exactly polished to a sparkle, but it seems clear that it hasn't weathered. With it being such a prominent thing to the islanders, I imagine they maintain it to some extent, and probably go in and out quite frequently. i definitely make a point to snap a couple of clear shots of it from various angles. I wonder how big it looks and feels on the inside. Actually, I would be careful with that. There are lots of booby traps in there. I see, I see. 
and I think we've faced enough dangers for today. Ah, oh, coconuts, that's no fun. We should go in. Should we go in, DK? Don't you agree? DK seems to really contemplate the situation. As he thinks deeply, he finds the time to eat more bananas. He takes out five of them, and uh, gestures to Diddy. Where do they keep coming from? He begins juggling the bananas to Diddy, who juggles them back. As their performance goes on, Diddy slowly begins peeling the bananas before throwing them back, to which the big ape eats each of them. Every time he eats bananas, he seems to up the ante. Is... is Diddy Kong completely ready to assist Donkey Kong with these physical gags at the drop of a hat? Do they rehearse these? I'm actually finding myself looking forward to what crazy banana performance he'll put on next. Nah. Sorry, little buddy. But I think it's a no-go for me, too. The two monkeys' eyes widen as they seem to be surprised by DK's response. As our esteemed guests on the island, we have, uh, responsibilities to Phoenix and Maya. Yeah, and as a just and fair ruler, I say we avoid putting them in danger. I hate for them to get hurt on their vacation. Wow, DK. That's very... mature of you. I didn't realize you could be so responsible. Thanks! Now if only Cranka could see that. Maya glances in Nick's direction, apparently seeking his wisdom too. Uh, I'm with them. I'm not looking for either of us to get run over by a giant boulder or turned into an arrow pincushion. Maya seems momentarily down in the dumps, but quickly rebounds back to her usual pep. Oh well, it can't be helped then. I'm sure we'll see plenty more cool places on the island. For now, let's go grab some grub back at the village. Do you guys have burgers on the menu here in Congo Bongo? What the heck is a burger? Is it some kind of banana? I'm guessing that's a no. Hey Dixie, since we aren't going into the pyramid, shouldn't we visit at least one other landmark on our way back? That's a good question. I'll try to think of something that would be between here and the village. Isn't Blister's factory just outside of the village? Maybe we could stop and look there. Oh hey! Not a bad idea! We can say hi to Candy while we're at it! Oh, and Bluster, I guess. Sounds like a plan! Follow me! Bluster Barrel Works, Exterior They reach the edge of the jungle and enter into a more rocky, dusty environment. It looks and feels like a quarry or a mining installation. There are even two minecart tracks outside, leading into tunnels below the ground. Each track appears to have a minecart at the ready. There's a very modern looking facility in the center, which must be the factory the others were talking about. I wouldn't have imagined a place like this would exist on an island like this one. These Kongs sure are resourceful. Do you guys actually need a factory on this island? What exactly does this factory make anyway? This is Bluster Barrel Works! It's a barrel factory! For making barrels. This place is pumping out barrels by the hundreds all day, every day! Aren't there only like seven of you on this island? Even if each one of you were an avid consumer, there would still be an absurd surplus. Such a blatant disregard for supply and demand would not only be an extreme waste of resources, but would diminish the value of each barrel to almost nothing. Tell that to Bluster Kong. From what little I've seen of him so far, something gives me the impression he never went to business school. I don't get it. How is the island not completely flooded with barrels at this point? I don't know. DK picks up a nearby barrel and holds it horizontally above his head before hurling it an impressive distance into a nearby tree where it loudly bursts into pieces. Maybe it's because they're so fun to smash! Well, there's your answer. Huh. I suppose you can't put a price on happiness. Well, let's check out the inside. I bet Candy's in there working now. And Bluster, I guess. Hang on just a moment. I pause to angle a number of snapshots of the exterior of the factory and the surrounding minecart area. Satisfied with my photos, I quickly catch up with the rest of the group. Bluster Barrel Works Interior The interior of the factory is expansive, with quite a few points of interest for the tour group. The most obvious fixture in place is the assembly line conveyor belt where barrels are constructed. It splits into two paths, and I see Candy operating a panel in front of the line. 
Depending on which switch she hits, the barrel will go one of two ways. I think she's quality checking to make sure the unfit barrels are sent back. Oh, hello everyone! How nice of you to visit me while I'm on the job. You won't be on the clock for much longer. It's almost lunchtime. You need to take a break and come have an unforgettable luncheon with Phoenix and Maya. Oh, and Bluster, I guess. Oh, that sounds absolutely lovely. I could use a rest after all. Bluster is acting exhausted and appearing to wipe sweat from his brow. However, it's clear to everyone that he hasn't been working at all, just watching Candy work. I'd like to take some pictures of the room, would you mind? I've been saving photographs of every place we visited so far, and this factory you've got going on certainly is interesting enough to want to remember. Oh, of course! I'm glad that you recognize just how fantastic my factory is! I snap a few different angles of the room. The assembly line's various sections are front and center in most of the shots, but I took a few of the surrounding areas too, which is mostly just wood and supplies used to make barrels set off to the side for later use. Well, let's go get lunch going! My stomach is rumbling just thinking about it. Right behind you. Treetop Town. While the guests were away, the Kongs back in the village pulled together a large table with chairs and set them down neatly along the wooden walkways. Welcome back, dudes. Glad you could join us. Ah, you're just in time. Come, have a seat. We're just about to dig in. It looks like a full party at this point. All of the Kongs are here joining us for this meal. They've got banana dishes, plantain dishes, coconut dishes, veggies, lots of tropical beverages. Heck, they have a little bit of everything. As the meal gets started, we all dig in. I gotta say, I am really loving this island life right about now. The meal progresses very smoothly as they take moments to chatter between bites. Eventually, the conversation shifts to the tour and what the tourists have seen so far. It was a tough choice to make, but I decided that we wouldn't go into Inkadinkadu's temple. It's just a little too dangerous in there for our new human friends. You know, I'm impressed, Donkey Kong. That was a good judgment. Was it good enough for the future ruler of Congo Bongo? It's a start. <laughs> but don't get too full of yourself. You've still got a long way to go, DK. Aw, oh, come on! <sighs> You're always going to keep saying that I'm not ready. It's really uncool. You need to give up on trying so hard for something you aren't ready for. It's like Inka Dinka Do always says, to know to everything, know everything one. one must give up everything. Yeah, 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 I know that already. Donkey Kong, wouldn't it be better for a future ruler to not throw a tantrum in front of our guests? Well, fine. I won't then. But I really want to talk with you after lunch. We can talk all you want. It won't change anything. I'm sorry, my new acquaintances. Don't take it personally. Those two have been going at it for quite some time now. I'm sure they'll work out their grievances. Eventually. DK holds his head with his hands and leans his elbows on the table. He seems really bothered by the whole future ruler thing. Poor guy. He takes out... <coughs> Six-shot revolver! <coughs> huh? Oh, oh, luckily none of the chambers have ammunition in them, but... He peels a single banana, loads it into one of the chambers, snaps the cylinder back, and gives it a spin. He and Diddy, both very somber, then take turns putting the gun to their mouths and firing until DK eventually gets the banana and eats it. Maya and I don't really have much to say given the awkward atmosphere. Is awkward the only word you can think of to describe what just happened? Well, this meal seems to be wrapping up. Why don't you both head down to the beach? There's plenty of fun to be had under the sun. After a peaceful night of sleep, we'll meet bright and early at the hotel and resume our tour, okay? Sounds good to me. Thank you once again for the hospitality. And thank you for the meal. It was delicious! The unforgettable luncheon wraps up, and as Maya and Phoenix start walking towards the barrel elevators, they notice DK and Cranky go into the cabin they visited earlier together. But Cranky, I just don't get it. Of course you don't get it. If you did get it, then we wouldn't be having this argument. But I'm the future ruler of Congo Bongo. 
Shouldn't that mean... It's too far away to hear what they're saying, but DK's emotional gestures and movements make it clear that he's pretty worked up. Everyone seems to notice, but they all pretend not to see. Well, I sure hope those two can mend their friendship. Someday when you're older and Congo Bongo Bay, hotel room. Well, Maya and I had a blast on the beach for the rest of the evening, at least. <sighs> I was so tired from a long day of enjoying our vacation that I don't even remember falling asleep. Mm, on sleepy days, however, I find myself half awoken by... what sounds like some sort of shattering glass? I have no idea what that could have possibly been. And, just as abruptly as the thoughts entered my head, I find myself going back to sleep. Though such an inconsequential noise is only enough to just barely disturb the sleeping islanders, a sense of unease still blankets Congo Bongo. Only time will tell what awaits tomorrow. But until then, our tired tourists will get some well-deserved shut-eye. To be continued. Hey everyone, I am proud to bring episode 1 up to date with completely original artwork. Thanks again to Dan Chaos One, who has worked tirelessly to make Congo Bongo Island look better than it ever has before. Not only is this a thank you gift for helping this channel to reach 100 subscribers, but this brings the episode up to par with the level of quality and style that you can definitely expect from every future installment as we move forward with this amazing journey. I'd like to give a huge thanks to all of the voice talents who have positively brought this colorful cast of Kong and Kremlin characters to life. You can find all of their related social media links in the description below. Thank you so much for supporting our dreams. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are what keep this project going, and it means the world to us. Hope to see you soon at the premiere of Episode 3.